If you're just joining us, I'm Lauren Ashburn, the managing editor and anchor of EWTN News Nightly. You can see that at 6 and 9 p.m. Let's go out to the field. Uh, we're going to talk to Teresa Tamio from EWTN's Catholic Connection Show. She's also out there, as you just saw, with Damon Owens. He's the executive director of Joy to Be Ministries. All day long, you are going to see the abortion counter. It just started at 9 o'clock this morning and counts up to the number of abortions since then the amount of lives lost all over the world. Right now, it's more than 7,500. You know, Teresa, the one thing I'm struck by is that this movement began with one woman. She was so yes, offended yes. by the Roe v. Wade decision. Nellie Gray, she was a pioneer of the pro-life woman. She was a career woman. She was a Democrat. She right. was a lawyer at the Labor right. Department. She served in the Women's yes. Army Corps during World War II and quit her job to take on yes. this cause. I know that you're there now with Claire O'Keefe with the Ave Maria Law School and the school's chaplain. Yes. Um, I just think yes. that it's amazing that this, this was started by a lawyer. <laughs> Well, think about it. And, and the power of one, as you mentioned earlier, is the theme for this year's March for Life. And, and my anchor back in the studio, Claire, was, was asking, us, asking us about the importance of this whole march being started by one woman, Nellie Gray, who happened to be a lawyer, right? Because she was very upset about the very bad legal decision of Roe v. V. We are with Ave Maria Law School of Law, a wonderful school that's cranking out some amazing lawyers who are so needed with all the legislation that we've been hit with attacking our religious freedom. Let's talk a little bit about what it means to you as a woman, as someone who sees the growth of, of the law school and the fact that Nellie Gray, as Lauren just said, was an attorney and decided to use her gifts, her knowledge of the law to start something to bring a, you know, addressing this huge issue, to bring attention to this very bad law of Roe v. Wade. Well, I think that the issue of you know the sanctity of life and the right to life is so um, keyed in with our mission, and so we work very hard to you know recruit students who are very mission fit, who have the beliefs that Mr. Monahan has that can go out and be the future change agents. And so we've been doing this march for you know, as long as the school has been in existence. So 16 years, we've been sending up you know dozens and dozens and hundreds of students over those 16 years, and it is really very near and dear to our heart and very important to us and, and our mission. And and I think that these folks, the students to my right, who I can't be more proud of um, for coming up here today, are going to go out there and hopefully do wonderful things on this issue. And I think, as we can see today, that maybe the tide will be changing and we will have you know, better efforts going, um, going forward. And I'm an honored and privileged to be with this group here today. Well, so are we. We're glad to have you. And this is Stephanie, correct? Stephanie, where are you from? What part of the country? I'm from Minnesota. Okay, so um, let's talk about your uh, ideas of what you would like to do once you uh, pass the bar and get out there and, and, and work as a counselor. What are you uh, looking to do as a, a lawyer to make a difference? Well, it's interesting because it, there's kind of a cookie cutter, cutter fit that most people expect lawyers to do, like work at a firm or work for a judge. But something that I've become very passionate about is working on a local level and like we can't change the culture of death to a culture of life until we change it where we are at home. And so I am at school in Florida, but I plan to go back to Minnesota and the Midwest area and affect change there. Like start, there isn't a march, for example, in Wisconsin that happens every year. So start a march at the Capitol there, um, affect change and really inspire people to be more pro-life and share the truth of, uh, of what being pro-life is all about being for life in every stage from conception until natural death. The tide is changing, as, as Claire said, but it's still extremely hostile out there, especially for people who have uh, beliefs such as ours, as we saw last weekend. Are you intimidated by that at all? And what motivates you to go out there and to make a difference in, in such a hostile culture? John Paul II, as you mentioned, calling it the culture of death. Honestly, there are times when you become intimidated by the hostility. I mean, you go on Facebook and you just feel the attack and the turbulence that that is present there but at the same time there's a conviction of truth and that is what we're so blessed with at Ave Maria School of Law is we have professors who share that truth with us integrate it into our learning of the law so that we can then go and integrate it into our practice of law and sharing it with everyone that we we touch with our legal education so yes it it's intimidating but I also have hope and immense courage, and I know that that's inspired in all of us at Avila. Well, 
You're inspiring, all of you. One last question for Professor. I just wanted to talk to you because Stephanie picked up on a point. She mentioned the word reality. It's something that we're not dealing with too much in our world right now, especially in terms of the issue of abortion, because so much of the truth of the abortion issue, and we know that Roe v. Wade legally was a very bad decision. I don't think there's too many lawyers, even on the other side. Some have spoken up and said that it's, it's bad law. But we do not see the reality of the human person because we're often those laws are struck down, the heartbeat bill we were just discussing earlier. We do not see the stories of, of so many ministries that help women. We don't see the reality of the fallout from abortion. And so if you're not seeing this, they basically go along and make up their own reality. And, and unfortunately, that's happening in law all too often. Yes. The um, Supreme Court nominee that President Trump is hoping to announce next week has to address the issue of abortion and to see it in the context of religious uh, freedom and to see it in the context of the dignity of the human person. That dignity of the human person is safeguarded not only by the United States Constitution, but by our understanding of the image of God in each person. And that, that, uh, that choice, the pick of the person for the Supreme Court is gonna be critical for putting a face on the unborn, putting a face on women who have been hurt by abortion. This is the, the, the reality, this is the, the truth that this justice is going to have to make clear in his opinions on the court. We really are hoping that President Trump picks the right man, yes. bright woman for this pray, job. Yes, we're praying about that and also we're just going to pray for all these amazing young students and so many people who are willing to go out there and make a difference through law. Thanks you guys. God bless you. Keep up the great work. Back to you, Lauren. This is the Ave Maria, Ave Maria School of Law, of course, folks that I'm with this morning. Back to you. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. I'll be speaking there in just a few months. I'm looking forward to it, to being in Florida in the winter. <laughs> I think that'll be great.